we have to start a petition online because I want, before the end of the season, a huge statue of Jose Mourinho in front of Formello. He is by far one of the best Laziale ever. Ever. I don't want to talk about it. It's easy. I mean, who would have put Pedro out of the squad and who would have sell Pedro for free to Lazio? I mean, only Jose Mourinho. Thank you very much, Jose. I know you are a real Laziale and I will always thank you for what you did. Not only Pedro, but even how many derby did you lose as a Roma manager? Jose Mourinho, we really love you. Alistair, are you with me with this one? It's not the intro I was expecting today, but I, I like it. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually made the same comment yesterday um, in a group chat straight after this game, more or less. Like Roma, especially the situation they're in and the fact that they went and got another bad result just before this, they might be, must be watching this like, oh dear, that was a bad decision. But then again, I mean, look, we didn't see this coming. No one saw this coming. Pedro's renaissance has been incredible. And I, I don't know, we just kind of have to sit back and enjoy enjoy the ride now. I mean, it's playing on the wing, playing as a number 10, scoring in Europe, scoring in Serie A, three goals in a row in Europa League. I don't know. It's, it's just amazing to see this kind of second lease of life to his career. Four games played in the Europe League, I think 300 minutes played, something like that. Three goals and two assists. Not that bad, huh? Yeah, not that bad at all. Um, 37 years old. I think we were kind of surprised uh, that he stayed at yeah. last, uh, over the summer. It seemed like his, his time was up a bit. It was kind of those vibes where it felt like he's probably gone over the hill. Wouldn't be surprised if I don't know, he took a move to, to the MLS or something like that. And, you know, thank you for your efforts, so on. So for him to not only stay on, but then become an absolutely crucial part of this team has been huge. Such a great example to the younger players in this team. Um, the likes of Isaacson and Chauna can look at him and be like, that that's how you achieve success. You know, this kind of attitude and um, desire, I guess, even after everything he's achieved in his career, to still be there, you know, finding his best form and, and finding a way to get the best from himself. Um, yeah. Incredible. I have to say that this summer, when there were rumours of Pedro that could leave Lazio, etc., I was, yeah, it's a perfect time. I think he gave us a lot already. Last season wasn't a, a great season for Pedro. Oh, I could say nobody had a great season last year except probably Rovella Guendouzi. So, you know, but you start thinking he's turning 37, he's hardly playing. Yeah, probably he's, he has a huge wage for Lazio. Let's not forget this. So, you know, I was one of the first saying, OK, Pedro, thank you for everything. And uh, I was wrong. I was completely wrong. And uh, Alice, I have to ask you this. When Baroni made that substitution, to bring in Isaacson, I thought, well, now Pedro is coming off, right? He played well, he was playing well, but I thought, you know, last 20 minutes, maybe you need more energy. You bring in uh, Isaacson on one side, Zaccagni on the other, so Pedro is coming off. Instead, when I saw Zaccagni's substitution, I was, wow, this is huge. Um, I wasn't surprised even that Zaccagni didn't take it that bad, to be honest with you. But again, Baroni was right. Taking off Zaccagni, putting Pedro, that switch from left wing, right wing, center forward. He moved everywhere yesterday and was incredible. Were you surprised? Well, I guess if, learn, learn not to be too surprised by Baroni. You know, <laughs> because the, the thing is, and I really like this, there are no um, irreplaceable players in this squad. And we got so used to a period where certain players in the team would always be picked and would basically never be substituted unless absolutely necessary, even if they're having a good game, because there's always that belief in the back of your mind that, yeah. I don't know, say Luis Alberto, if he's having a shocker, you would still think, yeah, but am I really going to bring on Toma Basic? Because the likelihood of a tired, bad form Alberto producing that moment we need is still higher. Whereas now, 
I like that he's bringing off Sakan Yin games just because it sends that message, you know, that it is a full squad effort. And that's what Baroni has been incredible at this season, especially in attack, because we've got so many attacking players. But he's found a way of getting them all to feel wanted and all to feel involved. So, and yeah, like you're just bringing up the goal picture here. I mean, the the change he made created the combination for the goal, didn't he? Because it was Isaacson's delivery that ultimately led to it. Yeah, I want to show you this picture and I want to show it to all our friends at home if you're watching on YouTube because this is the 91st minute and 30 seconds so it's one minute and a half till the end of the game. We could be, you know, we talked about it. One all against Porto, it's fine. We are still going to be top of the table. We uh, just played against one of the biggest challenge we had in the Europe League so it's fine. And then you check, this is two minutes one minute and a half before the end of the game, Isaacsen put the ball in the box and we have five players inside the box. Five Lazio players and only three Porto defenders. I mean, in the past, we never saw something like that, right? In the past, it was Chile Mobile, maybe Felipe Anderson, and that's it. If you go and check in this picture, there is Dia and Pedro, two strikers. Vecino and Guendouzi and Adam Marusic. I mean... How how much this picture tells you about this Marco Baroni Lazio, the mentality, the winning yeah. mentality this team has, right? Well, that's a really good point, especially because, as you've pointed out, the because of who is in the box as well. Because you look at this freeze frame here, and if a Porto player wins that uh, ball or the keeper catches it and, and makes a quick throw your midfield is gone yeah. and one of your defenders is gone. So the, the chance of a, a, a late counter attack are pretty high, but that, that is the way Baroni wants to do it. It's high risk football, but the risk reward balance, he just has this conviction that the re reward is always worth the risk, which is so different from how we were playing under Marisa Sari in particular. And, you know, even the way Lazio defend with the high line almost at halfway last night, you're thinking at moments, God, this is, it looks a bit dicey at times, but they find a way and they're not actually conceding all that much either. So it's great to see. I mean, it's just, it's, uh, it's something completely different, isn't it? And yeah. it's just great entertainment too. <laughs> Yeah, and before we remove this picture, it, it's really important to point out that Dia and Vecino that are in front of the, the of the last defender try to get the ball, they jump in front of him, they miss the ball, but at the same time, they took off balance the defender who is trying to anticipate Dia and forget that behind him, there's Pedro that it's all alone and scores. So, you know, having those players there has been vital because... Di and Vecino pretty much uh, elude the last defender and Pedro is only in front of the goalkeeper and cannot miss it. So this is why numbers count. One, because Porto defending was dreadful. I mean, last minute and you have only three defenders in the box and there are three outside the box looking in like, hey, you have to do it. So this is really important because in the past, we often see Ori Gire Mobile and maybe Miliko Savic back in the days there and nobody else so i think the change of mentality is really really important for lazio and you know we can say that we won at the last second but all season long lazio is trying to win games till the last second yeah and um all the old kind of restrictions i guess you feel have gone now in terms of mental blocks We've talked about blackouts year after year. Yep. But even even if there was that kind of blackout moments where you lose two goals in five minutes or something, you feel like it's not it's kind of alluded to this in the last podcast, but you feel like it wouldn't affect this team in the same way just because they don't really care, you know. <laughs> I mean, of course they care, but they, they will always have that conviction that they can they can respond to it in a way that we were totally unable to in previous recent seasons, yeah. like completely unable to make comebacks 
relying on clean sheets really in order to get results. And now it's is completely flipped. And the the fact that 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 is throughout this, the whole squad as well. That's not just this starting eleven we're relying on to to implement this style or to to have this mentality. It seems to be across the entire squad. And last night, Baroni replaced eight players from Monday. Um, it was just Tati, Guendouzi, and uh, Romagnoli, I think, who kept their place. And you wouldn't really have noticed it. You know, they're they're playing a higher level of opposition, and they're still playing, trying to play the same style of football. Everyone's still got the same conviction. And I saw Chauna before this game set was basically saying, it's great fun. You know, we, we really enjoy playing in this Lazio team. And you can see why. And that, that on top of everything else, that must really help. Everyone's having a really good time, <laughs> you know, the players yeah. and the fans. Yeah, it's fun to watch this team. And so Sari once mentioned it when he joined Lazio. He said, if the players enjoy it playing, then they will uh, transmit this joy even to the fans. And this is what's happening now. And as you were mentioning, let's not forget Porto is second in Portugal. It's a big team and they pretty much played all the starters yesterday while Lazio rotated. I mean, this was just a second start for Gigo. Big surprise. Uh, Vecino starting, Chauna starting. You know, we, we Mandas played again in goal. I mean, it's not easy to imagine the Lazio B team competing and playing probably better than Porto. That was, you know, one of the best teams in Europe. Let's not forget that Porto uh, in Europe beat Roma, beat Juventus. You know, they are a very dangerous team. And if I'm not wrong, this is the first time Lazio beats Porto in a, in a, in a yeah. European competition. So it wasn't easy. And it wasn't easy doing it, making huge turnover. So that's that's impressive. That's really positive. But again, I think, Alistair, that this year, everybody feels part of the team, right? They are not starters and substitution. They are all Lazio players, basically. Yeah, and that, that's, um, that's, that's so refreshing. And, and we've made this point before, but I think it's a good time to make it again that... It, it helps that there aren't any stars in this team. Yeah. And okay, you can maybe argue there are some players, obviously, who are the, the bigger names and so on. But the the gap between the you know the big players or and the rest is not nearly what it used to be. And and that I think has has really helped. And like I was saying with Zakanya, I think he he for me doesn't deserve yet to be regarded as being that untouchable player or so on and i was hoping he wouldn't be and it's it's good to see that baroni is 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 fine with substituting him and not playing him in every game and so on because i don't think we're seeing the form from him yet that means he should be even if he is the number 10 and the captain and so on so um it, it's great to see i think that the form is ridiculous so we have to we have to like be uh a little bit careful here to not go crazy when this ends. You know, this isn't going to happen all season long. We're not going to be winning game after game after game. But it's been really encouraging to see the, the diversity of ways that this team is able to win as well. And the, the game on Monday was so different from the game um, last night. And the team scoring lots of goals. It's... it's uh, it's not going to last forever, but we have to have to enjoy it while it is lasting. And yeah, look at that league phase table. I mean, Alone on top, four wins out of four, 11 2 aggregate score. I mean, incredible. Yeah, this this table is incredible, really. I'm, I mean, usually that's your struggles in Europe League. And we are bottom of the table fighting to the end, last game to qualify. And now, not only we are there on top of the table, four wins in four games, 11 goals scored, two conceded. Um, the only team with four wins in four games. So this is unbelievable. And as we didn't do in turnover, let's not forget that we didn't play the starters every single game. We rotate players. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this is the result. We had the Bashiru scoring. We had... Uh, uh, Chana playing, uh, starting, Mandas, etc. So this is 
the, <clears throat> the one thing I, uh, I think will be really interesting to see, I mean, in that table there, you see Ajax are second, who we've still got to play away. And for me, that's that's a huge game, yeah. not only because it's first v second the table, but because the one question we've always had about Lazio in Europe has been the away form, which has been so poor in recent years. And although we've won four out of four so far, um, the the away the two away wins, I guess there's a slight asterisk against because the Dinamo Kiev one obviously was was in Hamburg with the situation in Ukraine. It was a, a slightly different kind of away game to a normal one, you would say. And also the twenty one, there was the the early red card, which which we have to admit has obviously changed that game. So it, if we can go to Amsterdam and and take on Ajax and get a result in that game, that would be that would tell us a lot about how this team is improving away from home. The home form has been incredible. We've not lost since March in Rome. Um, six, uh, sorry, seven wins in, in eight games, and the other one was that draw with Milan. Yeah. So uh, the home form we don't really have to worry about so much, but it's really impressive what Baroni is doing away. Uh, you mentioned the red card. Uh, what do you? What's your take on the Gigo yellow card? Uh, it was generous because someone wrote me this morning and said, "Hey, I thought that was a red card for Gigo." Oh, really? Mm. Um, I don't know. I, I I I can't, in all honesty, really remember what it looked like. It was so early in the game. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would need to have another look at it, to be honest. Uh, can I say something? I know our Portuguese friends won't be very happy, but I hate Portuguese players. They're diving too much every time, <laughs> especially in the first half. It looks like they were all dying on the pitch. I mean, I was watching the game with our friend Carson, and he was so annoyed. Every time it looked like they were dying on the pitch. And then suddenly, after the ref gave them the free kick, they were resuscitating like uh, like Jesus, he said. You know, it's, it's, it's too much. Come on, I can understand trying to get a penalty. But diving in the middle of the pitch to get a foul, come on, it's... It's too much, right? Italian players would never do that, would they? Never, never, <laughs> absolutely never. Not that much, at least. Matias Zaccagni, for example, would never do that. <laughs> no, great player. But you know, one thing we have to talk about, Baroni, is this: how many other manager would have took take off uh, Zaccagni when we're still one over at home? We need, well, we need not, but we are trying to win a game. And you take out our captain, probably our best player, and uh, bring in Isaacson. You know, that's that's not easy, especially for a manager who hasn't got an international experience, who is at the first time managing a big team. You know, that, that's a, a sign of personality from the manager. Yeah, but like I say, I don't think Zakani has established himself enough yet to be regarded as untouchable. Yeah, but I understand. But, you know, look at the teams. How many managers say, OK, you know, Dybala is playing rubbish, but he has to play every single game, you know. And and uh, I, I can make this example for other teams. So it's not easy to take off the captain just because he's not playing well. No, but I, I just think it, it becomes easier the more you do it. And especially now that there's five substitutes. Baroni's using all five in most games. He's changing everything. He's changing centre backs during games. You know, yep. the, well, goal, the goalkeepers haven't changed during the game quite yet. But um, <laughs> you know, it's it makes it easier if if that you're you're um, consistent. You know, and if you're you're le leading by example in that way, because players come and go with two games a week. It means that everyone's getting their opportunity, both from the start and from the bench. We're seeing that substitutes aren't being, you know, viewed in this demoted role because substitutes are coming on and changing games like Absolutely. Isaacson did last night. So it, it's it's a new way of kind of viewing the game, I guess, which goes beyond Lazio. But that's, that's how you have to see it now because with five substitutes, you're able to change half your outfield players and you can change the game. So... Um, it's really refreshing. I think Baroni had to substitute Gigo. He had a yellow card. He's a mm -hmm. dangerous player. So you know, he said it after the after the game. I was concerned he would have get a red card. So I had to make the change. 
the substitution. I thought Gigo played well, though. <laughs> Imagine if it had been a red card on his, his full home debut, like three minutes in, getting sent up. <laughs> yeah, would have been very Lazial style of thing, right? What do you think of Gigo? I thought he played well. Uh, let's not forget, he didn't have an easy assessment, right? Uh, the, the the number nine of uh, of uh, Porto is the top scorer of the of the Europe League. This season he scored eleven goals so far in eleven games. So it wasn't an easy task for him and Romagnoli. And I thought he did well. He has to control a little bit more himself when he's diving and uh, you know some tackles are a little bit too dangerous, I would say. But I thought. He played well, considering that he he didn't play that much in the, in the last couple of months. So, is he Mauricio in disguise? <laughs> I hope not. I really hope not. The kind of barnstorming runs up the pitch and throwing himself into tackles. It's a, it's a bit Mauricio like. Um, yeah, I mean, it's good. To, yeah, it's it's good to have another option there, though, isn't it? Because we desperately yeah. need it. The other thing I'd say, talking about the centre backs, is that Romagnoli scoring. Um, we're now we've now got 13 different goal scorers this season, and so when we're talking, we've talked a lot about Lazio's attacking footballers and so on. But we're scoring from everywhere because it's it's right across the team. That that one was from a corner kick. We're actually getting goals from set pieces now as well from open play, as well as you know Zakanya's excellent penalty on Monday. We're getting goals from defenders, midfielders, and attackers. Our strikers are 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 scoring goals. Um, so it's just uh, it's great to see because it's not the how long did we spend talking about Chiro dependence and and the kind of yeah. worry about what happens if you lose that one player and now there isn't obviously we wouldn't want to lose Dia or or Castellanos but it wouldn't have the same completely crushing impact that that it might have done in with with Chiro in the past for example yeah how different it is when there's not anymore Luis Alberto taking corner kicks. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, yeah, still, go every time. <laughs> I'm still getting used to it. I mean, a corner kick that is dangerous for Lazio is still a surprise every time it happens. After five years of useless corner kicks, now we're finally dangerous and we score on corner kicks. Incredible. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's a bit of a novelty, to be honest. Um yeah, I mean, it's just amazing, isn't it? I mean, like I say, I think that we need to limit our expectations a little bit, but certainly we can raise them above what they were at the start of the season at this point. And I, I got one comment last night, and I have to apologize because I, I don't have it in front of me who actually wrote, wrote to me, but basically making the comparison to that 1920 season um, under Inzaghi where we were absolutely flying and then COVID hit and obviously it derailed what looked like it could end up being a Scudetto challenge. Um, well, I'll, I'll ask you about this first before I give my own opinion, but what do you, do you think that we're kind of, we should be talking about this team on in the same breath as that team in terms of being able to realistically uh, make a title challenge or where are we no i think uh, it's too early obviously we are overachieving from my point of view and you know the thing is when you gain confidence you start winning you gain more confidence and so you you are able to play better than expected this is the secret of this team we're winning we're getting confidence and we play each time better but I think that Inter, Napoli are a better team. So, I mean, I would be incredibly happy if we finish in the top four. And I think, Alizer, um, we are playing great football. We are winning a lot of games, but it's going to be really, really hard. It's not only Inter and uh, Napoli. Atalanta is a great team, and I think they're going to finish top four. So this means that one between Milan, uh Juventus is not finishing top four. So can, can we imagine Atalanta and Lazio ending in the first fourth position? I'm not sure about that. But definitely, I mean, if we keep winning, the, 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 the team will benefit from that and play even better uh, as time goes by. But 
I mean, yeah. I don't think we are a title contender this season. Anything can happen, eh? but we need a sort of miracle. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I think any talk of a Scudetto bid is is way, way, way too ambitious. <laughs> um, I think the team is doing brilliantly and it's been a much better start than expected. If anything, I, I expected that Lats would start the season poorly and, and play yeah. better in the second half, but um, I was very wrong about that and most people were very wrong about what this, what this team was going to do. I think we're, we're going to learn a lot in the next uh, next month in particular in December because we've got that two two games in a row against uh, Napoli and in the Coppa Italia and then in Serie A. We've got that away game in Ajax, which I mentioned, which will be a huge test of where this team is at on the road. And we've got Inter uh, as well. So I think, and Atalanta. <laughs> so December yeah. December is a massive month. To really be a barometer of of how good this team is and, and look we can't expect to continue winning absolutely every match but we've i think the be- most encouraging thing is we've already seen games where lazio including both games this week where lazio in the past probably wouldn't have won them for yeah. different reasons calorie game just being that scrappy horrible match that often has gone against us and last night for like you say probably settling for a draw as a good result well even because porto was very dangerous when we lost ball and they were really fast on the wingers to contract us and uh, in the past we often struggle like that right we remember especially in europe maybe we were dominating ball possession and they had two chances and we were all off balance and they would have scored so this is important. It happened with the goal they scored. Chauna was out of position. Marosic was two in front. But apart from that, in the second half, we, we struggled more in the first half, funny enough, right? They hit the crossbar. They had a couple of chances. In the second half, they pretty much didn't do nothing except the goal. So that's really encouraging and that's really promising. But Alessar, I don't want to finish in a sad tone, but we have to talk about Castorilli, right? Uh, Castorilli, who played less than two games in total minutes wise uh will will undergo surgery so this means he's going to be out for a month or so um it was a bet Lazio took this summer of signing Castrovilli uh it's turning into a losing bet right yeah it's such a shame I feel so bad for the guy um because he was he was unbelievable when he first broke through at uh, Fiorentina He's the kind of player everyone, any football fan, enjoys watching because he, you know, he's, he's got brilliant technique, great feet, great, great dribbling, just a, a lovely player to watch when he's when he's at it. But he's just had no luck, and this injury, I think, is supposed to keep him out for over a month. Um, like you say, even that is coming after he's barely been able to make an impact. And yeah, it's disheartening. I mean, you can only hope that he can come back from it stronger and and still make an impact on this team. But I guess people are, at this point, for good reason, giving up hope a little bit just because it's uh, it's a continuation of the same story. We'd hope this would be a fresh start for him. Yeah. And um, it's, yeah, such a shame. So this leads me to the next question. Are you changing the list and bringing in maybe Akpak Pro instead of Castrovilli till January or maybe Basic? Or you're keeping Castrovilli hoping that in December he will be back and thinking about the big games we're having in December, you hope Castrovilli can give a hand? Uh, yeah, it's a good question. I mean... I always ask a good question. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> Ag Pro and Basic also haven't. I mean, you say Castrovilli has barely played. Well, they haven't played at all. So <laughs> there is that too. Well, they couldn't. They were out of the list. So it's not that they were injured or something like that, right? I know, but I think you you need to get up to speed if you've not played competitive yeah. football. Um, and this is the problem with having guys who you fail to sell and can't. You know, yeah. basically mess up the transfer window by failing to get rid of players, and they end up not doing anything. I think, if anything, you know, the the Europa list aside, it shows that we really need a signing in January in midfield. We really, really need one because 
Castrovi, like you say, probably was a bit of a gamble they were hoping on. But with Guendouzi, Vecino, and um, Rovella. Uh, Rovella as your your only central midfielders, really, because Deli Bashiru is not, for whatever reason, he's not getting a game there. He has, he's played there once. Yeah. If he's seen as only someone who can play as a trequartista, then fair enough. But we need someone else who can play in central midfield because if we are going to tire, if this team is going to start uh, falling a little bit, it's probably going to be because of that fatigue setting in because the games are relentless and Lazio's style is relentless. So I do think we need someone else in there to help. Yeah, and uh, Dele Bashiro's not playing that much anymore. Uh, he started, and he started well against Venezia. Then suddenly he's losing uh, positions, right? Uh, do you think this is part because of Pedro performance, or do you think it's simply a coincidence and it's just a matter of time to see Dele Bashiro playing more? Well, I think there's two things. I think the first thing is that if if he's seen as the trequartista, he's then competing with all those forwards we've got. And that means he's competing with Dia, uh, with Pedro, and then Noslin, Chauna, Isaacson, Zakani, um, Castellanos, all these guys, there's so many of them and they're all playing better than he is in attack. So it's going to be hard for him to get a game in that position just because of the way that everyone else is playing. Yeah. And then the second thing is that when he was given an opportunity in a deeper role in midfield against 20, he wasn't all that convincing there, mm-hmm. even against 10 men. And so I don't know if Baroni saw that game and it's... I, I don't think he was a disaster, by the way. It was just that he wasn't particularly impressive. And I think maybe Baroni saw that game and thought, well, I... I don't think I can trust this guy yet in such an important role in in bigger games or against um, you know eleven men in a tough Serie A game or whatever. So I think he's just found himself in this awkward space in the squad where there's no real obvious place to put him at the moment. Alizer, before the international break, Scotland is playing again. Are you happy? We play at the moment. We... It's never very happy. <laughs> we play Monza. Alessandro Nessa, manager of Monza. Um, it, it's it's a difficult game. Lazio played already twice this week, Cagliari and yesterday in Europe League. It would be so important to win away at Monza, right? But it's not going to be easy. Monza is fighting for points. They've been very unlucky in the last couple of games. They're not playing that bad, but they're simply losing games where they probably deserve at least a draw. So it's going to be another tough game for for us. Not It's not going to be easy, right? Yeah, I think it'll be a bit similar to the Cagliari game, to be honest. Quite an awkward and scrappy one, I think. Um, I mean, Nesta uh, earlier in the season looked like he was on the verge of the sack, but he, he managed to kind of make a mini comeback. They, they were, I saw bits of their game against Milan last weekend, they were unlucky to lose that game I mean they just couldn't finish their chances but yeah I don't know yeah I think I think you're right I'm expecting a an awkward game I mean the thing Baroni's been so good at this season is getting the team to properly focus on each match as it comes um so we've not seen that kind of post or pre-European mm-hmm. uh, slump in the way that we have in previous years so I do have faith, especially because they rotated so many players last night before that win that we still have loads of good players um, who, who will be fresh, you know, to come back in for that match. Do you, do you expect massive turnover, like Noslin starting, Pellegrini starting maybe? Um, I don't know about Pellegrini because I think Tavares... Tavares should still start, I think, because I think he'll want... The strongest possible team in this game. Yeah, you know, I think Rovello will come back in. Probably Gila, Provadel. Um, I think an interesting one to keep an eye on will be Lazzari or Marasic because they're such different players. <laughs> and I thought really, Marisic played really well yesterday. Yeah, me too. Me too. And I wasn't and had, totally convinced by Lazzari against Cagliari either. Um, yeah. And I think he had a dangerous opponent because he had Galeano on his side, if I'm not wrong, and he was top scorer with uh, with Samu. 
So it wasn't easy for him. And he played really well. And I agree with you about Lazzari not playing great against Cagliari. But it's also good to point that it was his first game after one month of stop. So yeah, he yeah. needed time to, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but I think you're you're always, if you're playing Tavares and Lazzari, you are always ma making what's yeah. already a risky game plan even riskier. <laughs> um, put it that way. I mean, ultimately... Monza are in the in the relegation zone for a reason. They've only won one match all season, so they are a team that you you have to be looking at. Okay, give them respect and expect it to be difficult, but um, it's one that Lazio really need to be need to be winning. Especially, like I say, before this run of games coming up in the next month, where we've got all sorts of huge tests, and then of course that I don't think we mentioned this in the last podcast, but the the derby on the the 5th of January, which is going to be a nighttime kickoff for the first time in, I can't remember in how long, but in years, isn't it? The 8.45 kickoff time. Yeah, it looks like the zone pushed for this because there are not any good matches that weekend. And uh, so they got the authorization because it's it's the mayor of Rome that doesn't want it because it's safe for security purpose. It's, it's, not, it's a huge risk playing in a derby at night. But this time it will be finally a night derby. Because Vittorio is going around town with bottles, just, you know, attacking people on the street. Me so, and my kids, yep. Classic Vittorio. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, before we wrap it up, do you play, do you start Pedro Sunday against Monza? Seeing how he's performing? And where do you play him? Well, that's just why I paused. I was like, my instinct was yes. But then, um, yeah, where do you play him? I don't know. It's there's so there's a lot of options for for Baroni as well because the all these forwards are so versatile. Um, so where you know Dia will probably start because he was on the bench last night. But will Dia start in Tati's place or will will he start as the ten again? I don't know. I mean, um, Isaacson might come back into the team. I think Pedro could maybe maybe play on the left. I don't know. There's there's so many options. I think he has to feature at some point, doesn't he? Yeah. Because he's, you can't stop him at the moment. But he doesn't, like I was saying before, he doesn't necessarily need to start to make an impact in this game. Bring him on for the last half an hour and we can still trust him to do something. Definitely, definitely we can trust Pedro. Thanks again, Jose Mourinho. I will never forget this. <laughs> um, I think we can wrap it up here, Alistair. I don't know if you have anything else to say about the game. Um, no, I don't think I do have anything else to say. So... That's a good time to finish. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening. Please rate and review the podcast. If you want to support us, patreon.com slash Lazio Lounge. Membership starts at less than $2 a month. And we're going to be back after Monza Lazio on Monday. Take care, guys, and Forza Lazio. Cheers.